Hello, my name is Lutz Hilgenberg. I work here at the University in California at Irvine in the Department of Anatomy and Neurobiology. Today I'm going to talk to you about how we prepare cortical cultures from mice. These are postnatal day mice that we prepare those neurons from. And we typically use those cultures for either electrophysiology, for protein or RNA preparations. We use the same culture preparation for calcium imaging or sodium imaging. The nice thing about these cultures really, it's, it's an adaptation of the Banker protocol, but we grow these cultures in the absence of glial feeder cells, which makes it a lot more convenient and the cultures are usually more rich in neurons than in glial cells. So let's get started and I'll show you how we prepare those neurons. All right, now we are at the point where we can remove the brain and start doing the actual dissection. But before, uh, it's important to mention that the cover slips that you want to plate these uh, cells in need to be coated. And we used to do that, usually do that overnight at room temperature at a polylysine concentration of 0.1 milligram per mil. And the next day we come and remove the polylysine and wash the cover slips three times consecutively. Depending on the application, you use big dishes or small dishes, or you can use glass cover slips. All right, so this is the typical setup for the hood, and I'll briefly explain to you what solutions you need to have ready, and also which instruments come in handy for the isolation of the, or the section of the brain, and then the actual sectioning of the brain. What we have here is the dissection solution. That's cold, so usually it's, it's on ice. We have, have a Viber slicer that we need to section the brains. I have a, a boat that contains the section solution that the brain is being mounted on and then sliced. And I have various tools that I need for the removal of the brain. I have an agar plate, it's 4% agar that I use to hold the brain in place. We need a syringe, a couple of sterile filters, Wattman paper, dishes, petri dishes of various sizes, and this is my mouse pipetting tool. I also have pulled glass pipettes in here. Those are glass capillaries that I use as dissecting tools as well as to pick up the brain pieces and basically triturate these. So our enzyme solution contains dissection solution. Uh, there is L-cysteine in there to activate the papain as well as 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide to balance the pH. Once you add the papain, this solution is a bit opaque and it needs to clear before we can actually use it for uh, enzymatically digesting the tissue. And now we're basically ready to start the procedure. The Viber slicer has been prepared. I've inserted a blade that sections my brain and I've also stuck the vessel underneath that contains the buffer and supports the brain. And I'm ready to get the uh, agar block mounted onto my support plate that will also support the brain. So this agar has cured, it's a 4% agar, and I'll just go and cut right through an area like this, and on the sides, basically just get a rectangular agar cut out. Then I'm using a spatula, and I'm just popping this piece out of the agar block. And now I'm going to glue this agar onto my support plate with the flat side of the agar facing forward. So this is the support that uh, the brain is being glued onto and then is held in place by this agar. So when we do the sectioning this way around, the brain doesn't move backwards. Now we're ready to remove the brain. Usually we use a P0 or a P1 mouse. All right, so this is the decapitated mouse head and I'm just going to quickly remove the, the scalp. So I'm first going to cut the muscle band that's right here and on the other side. And then I'm going in with my scissors. I'm very careful that the inner side of the scissors is not going to damage the brain. And I'm cutting around the skull on both sides. I'm 
now we can basically just pick up the cartilage and I'm going to use my small spatula and I'm removing the brain like this. So this brain then goes into my petri dish that I filled with the section solution and it has a Wattman filter paper on the bottom. And what I'd like to do now is cut the base of the brain so I have a nice solid uh, flat area to mount the brain onto my filter. So I'm going to put a, a very small drop of crazy glue onto my support plate. I'm going to pick up my brain now with the spatula and I'm using my, my curved forceps uh, to help me with this. And what I want to do is basically drip off a lot of the excess liquid that I have from the dissection solution. And I'm going to mount the brain against my agar support. We're now ready to transfer the brain into the buffer bath, so I'm adding dissection solution to that little vessel. And I'm going to add the support that holds the brain that's being mounted with the brain facing the blade. All right, so the brain is now mounted and I'm going to use the vibro slicer and I'm trying to find the beginning of the brain, moving the brain towards the blade and I just cut a little bit of the olfactory. Now I'm moving my, my blade about 600 micrometers down and I'm doing another cut which should go right through the cortex. There goes the cortex and it rides up onto the, onto the blade and I'm moving my blade another 600 micrometers down and I'm cutting the second section. It's important that this is done continuously without interruption and nice and smooth and with, when you withdraw the blade you stop the vibro slicer. I'm now going to use a, a glass pipette that I used the wrong way. I actually uh, used the back end and I'm going to move this cortical section up in here and transferring it into a clean petri dish. I proceed through the brain, uh, always 600 micrometers, until I've collected about five to six slices for a P0 or P1 mouse until I get to the very end of the cortex. And uh, we're ready now to isolate the cortex from the rest of the brain. All right, so I'm using uh, these glass pipettes that are pulled glass pipettes as sharp as uh, dissecting tools. And I'm usually starting with the first section I got, which is the smallest. Uh, and the olfactory we have to remove. And I'm also trying to remove the meninges from this prep. Again, removing the olfactory of this piece, peeling, peeling it of the, uh, of the meninges. And, uh, sometimes you have pieces that you can't separate as easily, so just move on and leave those behind. The good pieces I always move towards one end. And I'm going to work my way through one section after the other. It's important that you get rid of the meninges. And also when you, when you look at these section sometimes you want to go and flip them over so you can better see where the fiber tract is that contains most of the non-neuronal cells that you don't really want in this preparation. Okay in this section you can clearly see this fiber tract underneath the cortical layer so I stab right between where the cortical layer ends and I'm pointing out the fiber tract that has most of the uh, non-neuronal cells that we're trying to avoid in this preparation. I'm cutting along this line, trying to leave the fiber tract behind.
This is the step where you mince the tissue into small cubes. All right, I'm, I'm sterilizing my enzyme solution now through a 0.22 micron filter attached to a, uh, a syringe. And I add that straight onto my, my cortical pieces. Just like this. Make sure that there is enough liquid that surrounds all the cortical pieces. And these cortical pieces then go into a 37 degree incubator for 30 minutes which should loosen up the tissue quite considerably. So it's been 30 minutes that these uh, cortical pieces have been incubating in the incubator. In the meantime, I warmed up some neurobasal media with B27 supplement that these cells eventually end up in. I've also prepared some solutions here. First one is the dissection solution, so it's a plain dissection solution. Then they get transferred into a high trypsin inhibitor solution that contains BSA as a scavenger and APV to block the NMDA receptor component. And then they go through three washes of low trypsin inhibitor, BSA and APV. I'm going to remove these pieces now from the papine solution and I transfer them into a conical tube containing DS, the section solution. These clumps will just travel downwards by gravity and it might take a minute or two before they all settle down in the conical part of the tube and then I'll just pick them up again and I will transfer them into the solution that contains the high trypsin inhibitor and again we want to wait until these clumps settle down to the bottom of the tube. There is one more wash through a high trypsin inhibitor solution and then these clumps get washed in low trypsin inhibitor. After my last wash in the low enzyme inhibitor, I'm going to transfer the cells in my pre-warmed neurobasal media, and I'm starting to mechanically dissociate the cells by triturating them up and down a glass capillary with decreasing bore size. I'm going to triturate the cells now and the tissue clumps but before I do so I will remove all the debris that is visible here. Uh, there is for example protein and DNA that, that leaks out of the cells that forms this cotton ball like stuff that hangs onto the tissue clumps. You want to remove that first because it clogs your, your pipette tip and you're forcing the tissue into through too small a diameter and then I'm going to go and break some of these glass capillaries to get the right size opening to move my cells in and out of the, of the opening. This is a good pipette. This one you can see that it's nice and round and doesn't have any sharp edges. I'm going to stick this into my mouse pipetter. There's a 0.2 micron filter in between and I'm going to now move the tissues in and out of my uh, glass capillary. So the first process should go fairly smoothly because the tissue clumps are not all that much bigger than the pipette opening. All you want to do is loosening up the, the tissue and then I'm going in with a slightly smaller pipette tip. I'd like to have a nice clean round pipette tip. This looks good and again all the clumps get moved in and out the pipe at once. So the tissue now is very soft and loosened up that if you resuspend these clumps in media, the cells will basically fall out. I'm now going to transfer all my dissociated cells uh, into a fresh 15 mil uh, milliliter conical tube. And I triturate them maybe two or three more times, gently up and down to break up cells that are still in those larger clumps. And then we want to wait one or two minutes for the big pieces that are still in there to settle down. Also, you might have glass pieces from your glass capillaries that you broke off that should settle down onto the bottom. And then we can use 
aliquots of this to plate out onto poly lysine coated cover slips or dishes. And I'm plating out 80 microliters onto this glass cover slip that has previously been coated with poly lysine. And it forms a nice bubble. These cells will eventually settle down and adhere to the glass cover slip. So after about uh, an hour, the cells have settled and I'm going to add very gently, going to add some more media to the entire dish. You can give it a, a gentle swirl, like so. And then these cells go into the incubator at 37 degrees and tomorrow I'll feed them with conditioned media. All right, so these are the cortical cells. They're just a little bit less than one day old. They were plated out yesterday. And you can see that there is plenty of neurons. All have lots of long neurites. And there's also some cell debris in there. Those are the cells that didn't make it. And these will wash out uh, in the next couple of feedings. The dead cells are the very small round cells with the ruffled membranes. I've just shown you how to prepare these dissociated cortical cultures. It is important to remember that when you remove the cortical rind from the brain slices, that you separate them from the thalamocortical fiber pass as it contains lots of non-neuronal cells. Also, when you triturate the cells, do not over-triturate as that basically kills off most of the isolated cells that you've uh, generated by now. So go easy on the tissue slices and you'll have a beautiful culture. Good luck on your experiments.